Boys. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Left Side Studios. I'm Lena. This is Dre. And today we're doing another unsolved mystery. <gasps> So today, we are going to discuss... Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I have to pee. So we're covering the Long Island serial killer, alias Lisk, alias... I don't know how to say this word. Gilgo, beach killer. Wait, what is... Hilgo, Gilgo. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know, last time I did the Amherst mystery, everyone commented, they're just like, you're pronouncing it wrong! <laughs> really? Yeah, you didn't notice? Just, I don't know how else to pronounce Amherst. Amherst? Maybe you don't say the H. Amherst. Amherst. Maybe. Amherst. I don't know, so now everyone's gonna give me about this. Alias Gilgo Beach Killer, alias Craigslist Killer. Oh no, Ripper. Ripper. <laughs> <laughs> to the oh, on! on May 1st, 2010, Shannon Gilbert, a 24-year-old woman from New Jersey, was reported missing. Gilbert worked as an escort and was last seen in the Long Island area. In December of 2010, a police officer and his dog were on a routine training exercise and discovered a body, the skeletal remains of a woman tucked in a burlap sack. <gasps> Upon further investigation, three more bodies were discovered in the same area. At this time, the police proclaimed that this was more than likely the work of a serial killer. <sighs> The four bodies discovered in 2010 were followed by six more discovered in the following spring. In 2011, investigators deduced that two of the newest found bodies may be the work of a different killer or a copycat. However, overall, it is believed that one sole person is responsible for at least 10 murders. After the discovered bodies were examined, forensic evidence determined that the remains had been there for between 5 to 15 years before the time of discovery. Ew. Yeah, gross. Most victims are believed to be associated with prostitution or other sex work. The killer would contact his victims via the popular website Craigslist. Upon meeting his victims, he would murder them followed by dumping their bodies and remains along the Ocean Parkway near Long Island and other parts of New York. Oh, that long. Yeah, what Long Island did you think? Oh. Like the drink? <laughs> yeah. Like they're all in one drink? <laughs> Ew. Wait, what were no, you I thinking? was, I thought, I, I was thinking Long Beach. But no. Because I was like, well, that's scary. That's but I no. imagine I should do one that's close to us. Wait, it would give away our identity. Okay, <gasps> so let's move into what the possible identity is of this suspect. The suspect is most likely a white male, aged anywhere between mid-20s to mid-40s, very familiar with the south shore of Long Island, with access to burlap sacks used to hold the bodies. Maybe charming with great social skills. He's an always. He was more than likely an organized killer, and it is speculated that there may have been ties with law enforcement, or at least he had knowledge of law enforcement techniques. Why? Let me get to the. <laughs> okay. So now that we know basically the story of what's happening. I'm gonna move into the suspects. <laughs> Obviously this case is still uh, a cold case. Oh, it is? Yeah, like it's, they don't know who this is. Oh, what? That's scary. Yeah, so there's no definitive answer, but let me move into some suspects that they think it potentially could be. Or like, when I say they, I mean either law enforcement or just the internet. Mm. Okay. Wait, what year was this? This ha- What are you listening? This was discovered in 2010, however some of the bodies uh, believed to have been there for 15 years or even up until 2013. So here are some of the suspects. The first was named Joseph Brewer. He was one of the last people to see the victim, Shannon Gilbert, alive. She was an escort to Brewer on the night of her disappearance after posting an ad on Craigslist, which plays into the whole Craigslist killer idea. Brewer claimed that Gilbert acted out of the ordinary and ended up leaving his residence shortly after arriving. She was later found banging on doors around Brewer's neighborhood, after which Gilbert made a 911 call claiming that they were trying to kill her. Who's they? I don't know. That's just what she said. Like, in quotes, she's saying, they were trying to kill me. However, after all this, no wrongdoing was found on Brewer's behalf and he was cleared as a suspect. I don't know, that's all the information I can really find on it. I mean, there is like a little bit more about saying how he basically tried to follow her and then she was like 
trying to take a taxi and they, like him and the taxi driver were just like what the heck and it was just like all a weird thing and I think there were witnesses that like saw that like he wasn't he didn't follow her and they just saw her running mm. so I think that's why he was exonerated but however it's just kind of a sketchy situation however but he's not he's not a suspect okay the next suspect Dr. Peter Hackett <laughs> he did it <laughs> last name Dr. Predestined, yeah. two days after Shannon Gilbert went missing her mother, Mary Gilbert, received a call from Dr. Peter Hackett claiming that he was taking care of Shannon and he ran a home for wayward girls. Five days later, he made another phone call to Mary claiming that he never came in contact with Shannon and denying ever had made the original phone call to begin with. Shaping up to be sketchy. Yeah. Phone records did later confirm that he had in fact made two phone calls to Mary during this time, however. What? Mm -hmm. So what if they meant what? Both suspects. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, wait, let me finish. Let me get through all the suspects. Okay. The location where Shannon was later found was in close proximity to Hackett's property. The Gilbert family eventually filed a wrongful death suit against Hackett in 2012. They believe he took Shannon into his home, administered drugs, and facilitated her death, which may have explained the erratic behavior claimed by Joseph Brewer on the night she went to his home. However, later it was discovered that Hackett historically would insert himself into major events going on in the society, in like the mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. uh, as a means to gain attention. This was furthered in his embellished role with the TWA Flight 800 investigation. He basically inserted himself in that investigation when he had no part in it. To further his innocence, Hackett's wife and two children were also at his home on the night of Shannon's disappearance and would have been aware of any such events transpiring. Hackett was later ruled out as a suspect. What if the, she meant they as in him and his family? Maybe. The next suspect is James Burke. Former Suffolk County Police Chief, he frequently engaged <clears throat> with prostitutes and one escort came forward claiming that she had relations with Burke that bordered dangerously abusive. In the mid-1900s, he was suspect to an internal investigation due to his romantic relationship with a convicted prostitute and a drug offender. He was found guilty of unbecoming conduct, but he was never formally disciplined. The most notable punishment was that he was passed over for a promotion. However, he was later named Chief and he declined the FBI's offer to create a profile regarding the list case. Wait, can I just point out that the prostitute got in trouble, but the guy who bought the prostitute wasn't in trouble? Yeah. That's, okay. In late 2016, Burke was sentenced to 46 months in prison with three years of supervised release for beating a man named Christopher Loeb who stole a bag filled with sex toys and pornography from his car. <laughs> So this is a just stand-up guy, yeah. stand-up police chief. Yeah, for how is he a police chief? I don't know. But this is one suspect that was never ruled out. <laughs> he did end up going to prison, but it wasn't for this case. However, a lot of people are like, okay, why did he like deny the FBI's investigation? Why didn't he like follow up on this case? Got it. So when <clears throat> someone denies like an investigation, what happens then? The FBI is like, oh, okay, you denied it. Never mind. I mean, they never, the FBI never formally gave, like, the profile that they were saying that they will give them, so I guess they did. That's so weird. Next suspect, John Bitroff. Like, B-I-T-C-H? No, B-I-T-T-R-O-L-F. John Bitroff was a Suffolk County resident who lived near where the torsos of two victims were discovered. He was convicted of murdering two prostitutes in 1993 and 1994. Claims that there were similarities between Bitroff's known crimes and a few of the list murders caused him to become one of the prime suspects. He was also a hunter who was known for mutilating animals, and on a few occasions, his neighbors admitted to finding him abusing animals, like actual just animals around, you know, cats, dogs. Did he get in trouble like for this at least? No, not that I know of. Why? I don't know. It was also later noted that Bitroff was best friends with one of the victims, Melissa Bartholomew. Oh, shit. That's suspicious. <laughs> Maybe this guy is one of the prime suspects because he has a history of convicting murders. Mm -hmm. Convicting? Is it there? No. Committing. Committing. 
he has a history of committing murders, but I don't know. There's not too many things that tie him to the crime per se, other than his relationship with one of the victims. Yeah, but like if it's like a big county or a small county, like people come out. It's true. That, I, I don't like the cop. He's like yeah, the one that I want to blame. Like. James Bissett. After the suicide of local businessman James Bissett, rumors started arising linking him to the List case. Bissett killed himself two days after Shannon Gilbert's remains were found. Speculation grew when it was revealed that Bissett also owned a nursery and had access to large amounts of burlap sacks. Oh, come on! It has to be him! Wait! Police to this day deny that Bissett was ever even a person of interest. What? Why? Oh, so this is the internet. Based off of those profiles, what would you lean towards? The last guy? James Bissett? Yeah. The one that committed suicide? Yeah. Just because he had access to burlap sacks? Yeah. That's and really the only suicide. thing that ties him. And he committed suicide. To, okay, so basically if you commit suicide... Or but you know murders, what? No, I take it back because like to commit multiple murders, like to be a serial killer, I think you have to be a psychopath. And I don't think psychopaths have that, like, remorse Empathy, to kill themselves. Yeah, yeah I don't know that I f- lean towards James Bissett. I kind of lean more towards James Burke, the cop, because it's just kind of, like, odd that he's had all these, like, run-ins with prostitutes and also that he, like, denied the FBI's involvement. Mm-hmm. I-, I just think it's, like, fishy business. Yeah, and then maybe he had, like, a cop friend that helped him out. <laughs> well, I mean, he's in the police force, so of course he did. Yeah. And especially because, like, one of the identity traits that probably the victim, or probably the suspect has, was the fact <coughs> that, like, he had to have had great knowledge of law enforcement techniques to evade it. Mm-hmm. It's, like, weird because, so witnesses saw the first guy. With her. With her. Yeah. But then there was no one ever at all after? Well, they say that, like, she had called a taxi. Mm-hmm. And when the taxi got there, she, like, sprinted away from both the guy that she was with and the cab driver. I don't know. I don't know the details of it. But basically, that he was exonerated as a suspect, so. Next episode, we go to Suffolk County. <laughs> yeah, right. So why hasn't the killer been found? There's no knowing how much evidence has slipped through the cracks, especially being that the head of police was the suspect. Yeah. Nevertheless, whatever the reason is for this unsolved mystery, a killer may or may not still be on the loose. That's terrifying. Like, if that was in my county, I would really consider moving. Well, the thing is that he did prey on a particular population. Oh, just prostitutes. Yeah, he was, it was prostitutes and sex workers, which... I mean, it makes sense, and this is the reason, probably part of the reason why he hasn't been caught. Because a lot of people who work in this line of work or whatever, this industry, um, they oftentimes have burner phones, they don't have like a trail of evidence, Mm -hmm. they don't really tell people what they're doing, who they're with. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's not impossible, but yeah, it's just, it's harder to find the evidence because to begin with, the victim is the one trying to hide it. Yeah. Be careful out there, guys. Thanks for tuning in. (laughs) (laughs) Let us know down below who you think is really to blame. Lynn and Dre are about to leave the building. (laughs) (laughs) They can can see us. Wow. (laughs) They can see us when we lay down. That would be so stupid. Lynn and Dre out. They just see my stomach. (laughs) (laughs) Lena and Dre out. (laughs) <laughs> Your hair is still in it. No!